Okay, Hello to our fellow members of the uh, Blood Tribe. The Blood Tribe Chief and Council is asking all of the membership that are eligible to vote ages from 21 and over on March the 11th, which is next Monday. We are going to have two voting stations. One is going to be at the multi-purpose building here on the Blood Reserve in Standoff the other one at the Carriage House Inn in Calgary, Alberta. The times for both polling stations is from 9 to 8 o'clock, and we encourage everybody that is able to vote to please go vote. Now, a little bit about the claim to give you a better understanding of the importance of the, uh, of the vote is that back in 1893, the Blood Tribe was selling their own horses to be able to purchase cattle. And this is not the treaty entitlement to cattle. A lot of you have been hearing about the cows and plows claim. This is not the cows and plows claim. This is the mismanagement of assets. The tribe purchased and the herd grew up to about 5,000 head during that period of time. And the tribe had purchased prime head of cattle that were worth a lot of money. What happened is that Indian Affairs came in during that time and they said, we can better manage the cattle for you. We will take over the management of your cattle. That's why the cattle are referred to as assets, because they're referred to as assets. And they mismanaged it. So therefore, the claim is titled the mismanagement of assets claim. During that time, during those years, Indian Affairs leased out most of the Blood Tribe land. They leased it out to non blood tribe members and there was also overgrazing on the land and then there were several bad winters that the tribe encountered that they lost a lot of the cattle as a result because Indian Affairs were not taking care of them properly including during those winters those so the tribe suffered a loss a lot of you have may have read a document by an Indian agent by the name of R. N. Wilson. R. N. Wilson, during the final days of his life, had made a confession, and he indicated that he, as the Indian agent, was aware of what Indian Affairs was doing, and he was also a participant in what Indian Affairs was doing. And what we did was working with the elders because the elders have always encouraged the tribe not to forget about these claims. And one of these claims that the elders encouraged us to pursue was the mismanagement of assets claim. A lot of research was taking place prior to 2000, and this research involved the elders' recollection of our history, the elders' knowledge, that was then submitted to our lawyers. And our lawyers had began doing their historical research and then they submitted it on behalf of the tribe to the Department of Indian Affairs specific claims process. And that was in the year 2000. Now, up to that point in time, there was correspondence and meetings that were taking place between Indian Affairs and the tribe. And in 2011, Indian Affairs finally admitted that the tribe did have a valid claim. Once they admitted to that, then there was an offer to negotiate to the tribe. The tribe accepted the terms of negotiations in 2013 by way of a BCR, a Band Council Resolution. So from 2013 to now, 2019, we finally have 
a ratification vote where we can take the settlement offer to the membership so all of the membership that are eligible to vote can vote on what the tribe reached through negotiations of $150 million. That $150 million is the maximum that any First Nation can receive through the specific claims process. We can't receive any more than that. And the tribe had undertaken a joint research with the Department of Indian Affairs with Canada. And the research was done by experts, by consultants in their area of agriculture and in their area of farming and ranching to come up with an amount. So historical evidence was gathered. What we did was working with the consultants is we determined what the, pro what the price of a cow and calf was back in 1893 up to 1905, 1904, 1905. The cost of what a bull was going to be costing and then we brought the numbers forward to today what the cost of a cow calf was going to be in today's prices, the cost of a bull, how many cattle there were, how many cow calves there were, how many steers, how many heifers, how many bulls. And then we came up with an amount. And we made that offer to Canada and we said this is what our claim is worth. So of course there was some going back and forth. And then Canada finally said yes you are right that's what your claim is worth. So they had agreed to that in April of 2018. However, we never received the formal letter of offer from Canada because that's one of the requirements. We have to have it in writing. And Canada finally wrote to the tribe in December saying we accepted the offer of $150 million. Now, we had to call a special council meeting in December and we presented it to chief and council. Chief and Council accepted it along with the settlement agreement that we also worked on with Canada. We have to have a settlement agreement in place and that identifies what the claim is all about and what the amount is. We also have to have a trust agreement in place. This trust agreement is a requirement by Indian Affairs they do not have to have a copy of it, but it is something that we have to have in place identifying how we're going to be using the money, how we're going to be spending the money. If you recall a few years ago, we asked you, the membership, to vote on the bombing and gun range settlement agreement and trust agreement. And at that time, because it was a small amount, we had indicated that we were going to be using it towards the construction of a building, a capital project. And some of the membership asked, how are we going to have input into saying what kind of buildings should be built? So we put out a survey, and this survey took about three months. And we had it on the website, the Blood Tribe website, to allow everybody to participate in identifying what they thought were priority buildings. What came back happened to be what Chief and Council came up with as well. Now most of you must have received an information package. If you haven't received an information package that contains the settlement agreement and the trust agreement, please pick one up here at the administration office. And in that information package, you will have the detailed settlement agreement that you can read. You will also have a copy of the trust agreement. The trust agreement has indicated that the tribe is going to be building, um, putting the money towards Red Crow Community College, a, pro a portion of it towards a new administration building, some of the funds to go towards a new hockey agreement, I mean a new hockey rink. Um, it's going to go to as well a hotel convention center that should be built on the lands that the tribe bought through another settlement agreement 
which most of you know as the Acres Claim 1 and 2, and it is going to go towards a treatment facility, and some monies will be left over, a small amount that will go towards um, enhancing the Ridcrow Park, the rodeo ground. So there's something in there to go towards everybody's interests on the reserve. Unfortunately, these dollars cannot be used for programs and services. Now, all of these buildings are not going to be built at once. They are going to be built, and we've identified up to 20 years. Some of them may be completed within the next year, two years. So all of them hopefully will be completed within the next 10 years. But we wanted to give ourselves enough time, so we said 20 years. Now, because we've got such a large amount, 150 million, the uh, tribe also stated that we want to give a distribution to our membership. We've never had an opportunity to give out a distribution from our other claims because the amounts weren't that big. But with this one, we were quite excited and we were very happy to be able to offer 2000 per individual, per every member of the blood tribe. And that amounts to a little over $23, $24 million. So that's quite a bit we're going to be giving out. With the other projects, the money is going to uh, be going into the trust account, and that's explained in the trust agreement. We have to pay our loan funding. Every year when we were researching this claim, we received a loan from the government. So now we have to pay it back, and a little bit goes towards our legal fees and the ratification cost. The Blood Tribe hired eight to 10 people to go door to door, and this is the last week for those individuals to go door to door to explain the settlement agreement and the trust agreement. If nobody has gone to your place, please contact the tribal government department within the administration and inform them that you would like to have somebody go to your place and they'll explain those two agreements to you. We are encouraging everybody over the age of 21 years to go vote. We had mail-out ballots that went out, and these went to those officer residents that couldn't come down to vote or go to Calgary to vote. Now, because it's such a high amount, Indian Affairs had also placed, uh, increased the number of people from our membership that have to vote. Our voting population today is at 7,515. Out of that, 25% have to vote. And that comes out to, and this is today's numbers, 1,879. Out of that, 50% plus one of those need to vote in favor. And that comes out to 949 that will have to vote in favor next Monday. People have been asking what happens if the tribe doesn't get the number of people that need to go vote, vote, and the number of people to vote in favor. Then the offer goes away. The 150 million goes away and there will be no distribution. There will be no new buildings. Canada will take that offer back and they will offer it to some other First Nation that is close to settling their claims with Canada. So if you're wondering, well, if I vote against this, maybe we'll have another chance. And no, that's not going to happen. Uh, a no vote is a no vote, and we lose out on the money. We save Canada $150 million. So this is a very important vote, not only because we've got an opportunity to give out 2000 to our membership, but also to be able to build these buildings that we really need on the reserve. We don't get any funds anywhere else to be able to assist us with these buildings. As you know, the hockey rink is falling apart. The administration building is very old. We, knew, we need a new peacemakers courthouse building, and we need to be able to put some money towards housing. Through the trust agreement, we've got approximately two million that we set aside to build a townhouse in one of the communities, a multifamily dwelling. 
that will assist us with our housing situation. So I'm encouraging all of you, please go vote and please vote in favor of this important vote. In regards to the trust agreement, Chief and Council had decided based on our recommendations from the negotiation committee is that with the interest that is going to be earned on the trust dollars, which is the settlement agreement dollars, every year instead of paying taxes on the interest earned, what we are going to do is to use the interest to give out as a per capita distribution to all of our members. So whatever the interest is, if it's going to be approximately anywhere from two to three million in the first year, that's what we're going to be giving out. It comes out to maybe a couple of hundred dollars a year to each member. But remember, the interest will continue to go down as we build these buildings. So it the distribution won't always be the same. It will keep going down. And for the voting day, there is going to be transportation provided for our Lethbridge residents. So anybody living in Lethbridge, there will be a bus that will be available at the Friendship Center, and it will come to the reserve four times. It will begin, I believe, 8.30 in the morning. Just check with the administration. There'll be notices in Cynic City and the Community News with the exact times and as well there will be some transportation provided to the different communities on the reserve like Laverne and I believe Moses Lake and then just check on the community news and Cynic City. They'll have the voting, I mean the pickup times uh, on the notices. So thank you very much.